So, uh, so we've got, thank you, Chilla. So we've got 15 minutes to really just give you uh, a little bit of a, 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 a taste about what we've been doing with Sawtooth and how it's being used in real life. Um, now there's other people on the call like Arun who are very heavily involved in the actual development. I'm co-founder and CEO of BTP, so I'm more involved um, in terms of um, really the business development and ensuring, of course, that we as a company are uh, involved uh, in the right in, in the right way in in the right um, um, uh, organisations, of course, including Hyperledger, which is who we're representing, and by the way, delighted to be sponsoring today. So, um, what's our focus and what's our perspective on all this? Well. The way we see the world is that business is inherently multi-party and what what that ultimately means is you know it takes two to tango um if it's a supply chain there's many many more counterparties involved in many cases but the whole idea of business is about collaboration and the core of collaboration is efficiency and trust so what we do as a company and uh, this is a plug for bdp is we provide those building blocks to enable multi-party innovation. And so what we've created is a, is a product that, that helps people do that. And it's called Sextant. And what it ultimately does is simplify the deployment and management of a wide variety of enterprise blockchain infrastructure. So we're gonna talk about Sawtooth specifically today, but uh, it's, it's broader than that. Um, shoot, sorry, that was my uh, keyboard going nuts. Um, so ultimately, if we think of this as a stack, um, we're involved in management and operations. And so what we've done is we've built a set of Kubernetes Helm charts. Um, and if you're familiar with the blockchain automation framework, it's very much along the same lines as that. I would say perhaps a little bit more advanced, but the, the whole idea here is that in the context of Hyperledger, which we're talking about today, we can actually deploy and manage both Hyperledger Bezu and Hyperledger Sawtooth. Uh, so, Somebody said in the chat they wanted to see this in action. So let's uh, let's go straight to a demo, and we'll we'll flip back and forth. Um, so it's logged me out, which any good application should do. Um, just refresh. So so I'm logging in, and of course I have done a little bit of background preparation. So. Let's start by going to, I've got three clusters here. Uh, so I'm going to go to the first cluster. When I say cluster, I mean Kubernetes cluster. And so I'm going to add a deployment. And what Sextant does is it allows you to take everything from plain vanilla Hyperledger Bezu or Sawtooth to Damo on Bezu, Damo on Sawtooth, and then something called TFS on Sawtooth, which we'll come on to in a minute. So let's start with a you know, very basic uh, deployment. So what we're going to do here, and obviously, this is only a 15 minute session, so we'll welcome follow up questions. And also we do have a booth, so please, please join us um, and ask any questions. But essentially, this is this is very much about making life simple for people. You don't need to know a huge amount about Kubernetes or even Sawtooth. I'm just adding in here some image pool secrets. This is kind of essentially permissioning um, the Kubernetes cluster to actually pull in the right uh, Images. By the way, we have something called BTP Parallels, which is completely free and available on Docker Hub, which is our build of of Sawtooth, which we maintain uh, on behalf of the community, and um, that's built, tested, and maintained by us, and available on a long term basis. So, if I just click deploy on here, what am I actually going to do? Well, I'm actually going to roll out a Sawtooth small Sawtooth network on this cluster. So, if we have a look over here. We should see something quite familiar to to everybody. So what I'm showing here is is really a sort of bird's eye view of that uh, of that running Sawtooth um, uh, cluster. It's come up very quickly because we're using Kubernetes, and Kubernetes is kind enough to cache images. Uh, so, but you know that's not very interesting in and of itself. If we go back to this diagram here. Uh, what we really care about are the applications. And so in this sense, applications, of course, in, in the world of uh, Sawtooth, uh, typically means uh, transaction processes. So if I go back to my deployments and I will undeploy this, uh, a little bit of safety there, just to make sure I don't do that accidentally. Come back to my Sawtooth demo cluster. 
now let's just go in and let's edit that deployment. Now I could do this live incidentally, but I'm going to add a custom container and uh, I'm going to use one that uh, the guys at Target have made available to us. And so essentially anybody that's involved with Sawtooth knows, I would hope that uh, essentially you package up your business logic as a transaction processor on the server side, client side, of course, you're engaging with that uh, through um, through uh, the uh, the actual uh, gateway. So uh, if I click save on that, um, and those of you that were paying attention will probably recall, I hope that the last time I did that, there were seven nodes in each of those sawtooth uh, pods. So in fact, there we are. So now what's happening, what's happening is we have launched an, a, a custom TP alongside the, the original sorted network. And so what's up and running now is, is a four node sorted network now loaded with uh, the, cons, uh, the consent source, not to be confused with consensus processor from target. Um, so this could be uh, any, any, uh, uh, any uh, uh, TP that you've developed yourselves. It doesn't have to be uh, publicly available. This one happens to be on Docker Hub. It can be, you know, on a on any other repo, and that's where those uh, image pool secrets come in. So that's deploying and managing Sawtooth. But let's go back to the presentation and let's quickly step through in the interest of time and look at uh, something else we've been doing. So we've been working with a company called Tachyon. In fact, we met them at Hyperledger Global Forum last year, last in-person event I actually attended. Um, and what they've built is a, a, um, a secure file system on Sawtooth. So suspiciously like the last, um, the last diagram I showed you, but if we go back to the demo and come out of here, um, and I'm just gonna stop this guy on deploy Sawtooth. And I'm gonna go back to my clusters and I've got a TFS cluster here. Um, and now I'm going to add TFS for sort on Sawtooth. Now, at this point, uh, no prizes for guessing that uh, this is uh, going to follow a very similar pattern. Um, the only difference here is, and uh, that, by the way, it's a TFS namespace. That's just the name of the namespace in Kubernetes. Um, I'm again going to just accept the the defaults. Now we could add a transaction processor here, but in fact, what we will be doing uh, momentarily is actually pulling in uh, Tachyon's own uh, transaction processor. So again, I'm going to add these um, image pool secrets. And yes, a bit of pointing and clicking going on here, but hopefully uh, not too onerous. Um, uh, I am the idiot that makes our software idiot proof. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, so I can roll this out and if we take a, take a look at this, you'll soon see a refresh and now we're rolling out. Now each of those validator nodes, so the four node network, each validator node is now a, a pod that's essentially think of it as a collection of containers representing uh, that node that's now of size 10 because we've now loaded in three additional components. Um, and these are the TFS, the Tachyon file system components. Um, the only difference between this and, and the regular um, uh, sorted deployment is that we've also got admin access to create uh, TFS keys, volumes, snapshots, and so on, which is beyond the scope of this, uh, this demo. That error warning coming up there is because actually the middleware, TFS middleware is still coming up. So again, in the interest of time, uh, I think I've got about four or five minutes left. I'm going to do one more demo. So come out of here. Uh, hopefully this is making it, uh, you know, real for you guys uh, and girls out there. So, um, and just, um, what do I call it? Oh, okay, it's checking that I know what I'm talking about. TFS on Sawtooth was the name of that deployment. That's just a logical name, incidentally. So I'll come back to clusters and our DAML clusters. So going back quickly to here, um, the third, if you like, uh, configuration that we also handle is working with something called DAML, which is a smart contract language. Again, topic for another day, but essentially it's open source. It's, it's been open source now for a couple of years. It's backed by digital asset 
um, another member of the Hydrogen family. Um, uh, and so here what we're doing is we're supporting uh, the deployment of the runtime DAML environment that will execute their smart contracts. And in this instance, as you can see from this diagram, we're supporting Bezos, Sawtooth, and a number of alternates. alternates. So, uh, so these are centralized ledger in the case of QRDB and also uh, Amazon Aurora and Postgres, which of course is just a plain old database. And that's because in this, in this particular example, what we care about is the use case and what's appropriate and what's not. So if I come back to here, I'm going to add another. Uh, and everything I'm doing today with uh, down on Sawtooth, I could, of course, um, do um, with Bezu. Uh, but um, uh, and it kind of gets it kind of gets repetitive after a while. Um, but again, the, the, all the defaults that are here, including, by the way, practical Byzantine fault tolerance is the default. Uh, that's the one we recommend. Tacky and I are working on something called ABFT, asynchronous design time fault tolerance, and we're, we're keen to, to explore other potential uh, uh, consensus algorithms. Because we're mostly dealing with enterprise, but exclusively with enterprise, uh, we don't want to use a forking protocol. So that means something like PIDE is not something that we're, we're currently looking at. Um, so now if I deploy DAM on Sawtooth, uh, what's going to happen here? Well, you know, hopefully you'll get the message. Um, it's another deployment of Sawtooth this time. However, we're loading in some additional components that are specific to the DAML layer. And so you'll start to see a few DAML components. So the DAML RPC, uh, Sawtooth's REST API is still there. Um, but you know, additional services have been added. And so uh, the point here about engaging with the DAML Ledger, as it's called, is whatever the persistence layer, whether it's Bezu, Sawtooth, uh, or whatever, um, you want the same, uh, the same, same uh, interaction through their gRPC mechanism or a JSON API. So coming back to just wrap things up, um, conscious of time, I will try and have a quick look at questions. Um, wanted to just give give a flavor of where this is actually being used, and we're big fans of of the Demex group. Why? Because they're really helping people address uh, climate uh, change in the sense of building climate resilience into their business models. So that means allowing us a business to hedge against particularly the effect of extreme weather events. So yes, it's important to address climate change. We all understand that COP26 is happening here in the UK in a few months time. That's very important. But along the way, businesses also need to be protected. And, um, uh, and one way of doing that is, of course, through insurance. And so the Demex Group is a spin out from uh, Munich Ray, a uh, big reinsurance company, and they're using DAMO and Sawtooth in, in their example. And I'd commend them to you. And uh, also, I'd suggest that you also, if you have time, go and look at the DemexClimateCenter.com, which is a free resource that they've now put online, which, uh, which allows you to then explore your, your location and see, see what's happening in the way of uh, the uh, trends in terms of uh, climate and so forth. So I'll stop the presentation there. Hopefully that was helpful um, and just come back and see if there are any additional questions in the time remaining. Oh, please be prepared. So, all right, I'm not sure there is, there's about 60 seconds left. Um, thank you, Erin, for sort of picking up on that question. Um, uh, I don't see anything in the Q&A. As I say, we will be here um, uh, for the duration. Uh, we, have a, um, we have a booth, so come talk to us. Uh, uh, please also, uh, if you're still awake, I appreciate it. it might be late for some of you, please come along to Chiller's Talk, which is happening later today. Um, that's at uh, 2050 Central European Time, 7.50 p.m., uh, UK, uh, 2.30 p.m. Uh, New York and 11.30 p.m. Pacific. So hopefully you can join us then where Chile will be talking about the DLT landscape, which is something near and dear to our hearts. With that, I'll say thank you very much for attending and uh, look forward to talking to some or all of you across the, uh, uh, along the way over the next uh, few days.